So the NVIDIA RTX 4080 has failed. And by that, I mean the launch has failed. Look at how many are still in stock at local micro centers. This is unheard of. Look, there is about 59 still in stock in the local store. And I look at another micro center that's pretty close by. They had 91 4080s in stock. And yes, 14 of them were the infamous Strix, the $1,549 4080. That's the one that we didn't really think people should buy. And it looks like nobody bought them. I mean, 14 in stock. Why did they even get that many? Did they really think they were going to sell out so fast? They got a pretty bad lesson from the RTX 4090 launch where the GPUs certainly did sell out. So this is kind of stunning, I think, for both NVIDIA as well as all of the other consumers. Many people have been saying you have to kind of vote with your wallet and not buy these GPUs. All of the reviews pretty much say that this GPU is $500 too expensive. Not the Strix, of course. That's, you know, probably way, way over $500. That's like $850 too expensive if we compare it to the 699 MSRP of the 3080, which this GPU really should be replacing. But NVIDIA didn't pull a bait and switch just now with the 4080 and increasing the price by such a dramatic amount. This happened during the GPU craze. The crypto mining boom, if you will, was definitely a big part of that. This happened with the 12 gigabyte version of the 3080. Remember, the original 3080 at 699 came with a paltry 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which some people complained about, some people were okay with. I think for 699, that's more than acceptable. So when they released the 12 gigabyte, by 3080 it didn't come with a simple $100 markup it came with an extreme markup and yes that GPU initially was also about the same price as what the 4080 is now and now let's hear a word from our sponsor remember if you use code CC20 there is a Black Friday deal going that you're gonna get 30% off from our sponsor. So let's take a look. Priced pretty good is a Windows CD key. Today's video sponsor is going to be VIP-CDKDeals.com. Very simple process. You can get a Windows 10 Pro CD key and remember to use code CC20 for a nice discount. And back to today's video. The EVGA for the 1.3, for example, I remember being well over $1,200. All of them were. I even remember the Asus Strix being like $1,550 or thereabouts for a 3080 12 gigabyte. We're talking about MSRP pricing here. We're not talking about your friendly neighborhood scalper, which, you know, those prices came to be expected. We're talking about what NVIDIA was selling to its board partners at. And then in turn, they were selling them to you at their, you know, retail price without any type of markup by another third party added on. So the 4080 price just goes back pretty much to trying to price it like the 3080 12 gigabyte. Of course, that one didn't work out too well because even though it was still a decent GPU, it was better than the original 3080, it really wasn't that much better. It had a little bit more in CUDA cores and of course two more gigabytes of VRAM, but didn't really make it $500 better than the 3080. And in fact, the 4080, as good as it is as a GPU, does not make it $500 worth it over the 3080. The the price has gone up way too much and the stock and inventory that we're seeing across the board is definitely pretty telltale. Now, a lot of people won't have a micro center near them. I understand that. There are people in Europe that are constantly telling me these GPUs are in stock. Both 4090s, they're actually surprised that in the US, the 4090s are completely sold out because in their countries, in Europe and Australia, they see a lot of 4090s in stock. The pricing on average overseas just seems to be much more expensive for the 4090, while in the US, when you get it from Best Buy or Micro Center or something like that, typically it will be a cheaper MSRP price than you'll find overseas. But the 4080 now is playing out to be a similar story pretty much across the board. Here's another interesting tidbit. That same store that I said there's about 59 GPUs still in stock from yesterday, they told me they only got about 100 GPUs. So that means they didn't even sell half of what they initially got. The 4090, here's going to be a bigger number. They got about 150 RTX 4090s compared to about 
about 100 of the 4080s. Now, the big difference is that the 4090, within about a day or so, sold out completely in these stores. Most of the models were actually gone by the end of the first day, and they had a few sporadic models. They probably had less than like five after the first day, and it was mostly like a Zotac or some kind of random 4090s. The 4080, after the first day, still had almost way more than half. They had 59, so that means that not only did they get less GPUs than the 4090, they also sold considerably less. Here is going to be another sort of sore point that really points to this not being a good launch. Those 59 out of 100, how many of them do you factor were likely going to be scalpers? Well, if you jump on Facebook Marketplace, you'll see immediately in the vicinity, especially of this store, a lot of people had already listed these GPUs as in hand, meaning they got it from that particular store. And some of them even still have sometimes like that little micro center ticket. So, you know, it came from there. So you can say, let's say if theoretically they sold 41, not sure if they got any, you know, stock that wasn't listed. I don't know if that number was accurate, but if we go by those numbers and they only sold like 41 out of 100, that means that who knows how many out of those actual GPUs were to resellers and people going on like Facebook marketplace and the secondhand market, AKA your friendly neighborhood scalper, maybe at least half, I would imagine, were people trying to resell it. Because after all, they'd have no way of knowing this was going to be a flop launch because after all, the 4090 did seem to sell out and there was a little bit of a demand on the secondhand market. I have to admit, even though we did think that the 4080 launch was going to be tricky, it's hard to know what to expect, to be honest. I mean, we've had now three major product launches and they've each been pretty different. Let's start with Ryzen 7000. First, these are CPUs, so of course they're not going to have the same type of hype as GPUs, but Ryzen 5000 was unbelievably popular and it sold out pretty much like GPUs did. I mean, people were even scalping Ryzen 5000 CPUs. You basically had to get there on launch day so you could get whatever you wanted and they were sold out for even like a couple of months. So there's definitely some precedent there for CPUs to have a similar sort of, you know, launch type of, um, you know, situation as GPUs. So Ryzen 7000 was basically sort of a failure as well. I mean, I was there at Micro Center, the launch day, barely anybody, we're talking about, I think like five to seven people bought some of the really high end Ryzen 7000, like the 7950X, which is a very small number compared to how many would have bought the 5950 and the 5900X, etc. Very small numbers. In fact, they sold very little during that week. They even had to do a special deal where you would get a free kit of DDR5 RAM, 32 gigabytes, if you bought a, one of the higher end Ryzen CPUs. Actually turns out to be a decent deal and they give you $50 off of a motherboard. That's how much they had to do for people to buy Ryzen 7000. Case in point, not a successful launch at all because the platform cost is just way too high. So those were the CPU launches, hard to say. Ryzen wasn't that great. Intel was just like a normal launch. But then we had the RTX 4090 launch. That one was a pretty major launch. I mean, people lined up. The reviews for the 4090 were pretty stellar. And remember one thing, the MSRP was only $100 more than the 3090 at $1599 compared to $1499. That's sort of a modest bump because people really, really liked the performance. It's already expensive to begin with. Don't get me wrong. It's, a, you know, $1599 is a lot for a GPU. Most people are not very happy with any GPU being over $1,000, but it is what it is. And $1599 is the price, but the price increased was modest compared to you know last generation the reviews were very stellar i mean even with the price people kind of said it was worth it and that really panned out during release day micro center had around 150 it seemed at least at this store other stores seem to have similar numbers if not more and even though i was there the first day as well it really did well like there were a lot of people lined up and they sold a considerable amount of them the first day i don't think it came sort of like close to selling out completely, but it wasn't really too far off. They only maybe had four to five 4090s during that first day. And during the first week, maybe they restocked a couple of GPUs once. But ever since then, the 4090s have been pretty much perpetually sold out. Of course, online is a different story altogether. They sold out very quickly. It's been difficult to source one online. They've had, you know, Best Buy and Newegg drops, but those are pretty sporadic. And that's where we get to the 4080. 
Now, we weren't sure if the demand was going to be anywhere near what the 4090 was. I mean, first, the reviews kind of say it all. The performance is good. There's nothing wrong with the actual GPU. The main problem is the price just feels way too expensive. It didn't feel like that with the 4090 for some reason, because like I said, the price difference was only a little bit versus the 3090, and people were used to already having that really expensive GPU. That's been sort of put into the, you know, the public perspective persona per se. The 4080 was supposed to be the replacement for a 3080, which is 699. And even though we had the 12 gigabyte of VRAM 3080 that was more expensive, people still can't really stomach the fact that that GPU went up about $500 in one generation. AMD is releasing RDNA 3 and they dropped pretty much a big whopper of sort of, uh, you know, the hype train is real with the AMD GPUs. I must say, just like with the 4090 was very popular, the 70 900 XTX, $999 MSRP. Are you going to be able to buy it for $999? Probably not everybody. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the AIB models are going to be considerably more expensive. I would expect it in the real world to be similarly priced to the 4080 when you consider the cheaper 4080s versus the more expensive XTX 7900s. But if you're looking for traditional rasterization performance, just a flat out good GPU, I think the 7900 XTX definitely is going to be great. The other model, the 7900 XT, I think is going to have similar problems to the 4080. It's just not really a very good value if you consider the small price difference between it and the 7900 XTX, at least on paper. When these things actually launch, a lot of things change. If you guys follow the channel, you'll see that the real world pricing of AIB models are often very different. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Would you buy a 4080? Obviously not. If you're waiting for maybe the AMD GPUs, or perhaps you've already gotten your 4090. Let me know down below what you think of the current GPUs. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.